Hello everyone, my name is May Franz Semena from Group 3 and we will discuss the two topics which are the following. The system or application domain and securing today's information system. In securing today's information system, here are the learning objectives in this topic. An overview to understand securing today's information system. Why are information systems vulnerable to destruction, error, and abuse? What is the business value of security and control? Third, what are the components of an organizational framework for security and control? And lastly, what are the most important tools and technologies for safeguarding information resources? All of these questions will be answered later in this video. We all know the world's largest social network is Facebook. Facebook is an American online social network service that is part of the company Meta Platforms. It was founded in 2004 by Mark Zuckerberg, Eduardo Severin, Dustin Moskowitz, and Chris Hughes. All of them were students at Harvard University. Even Facebook is the most known as the largest social network. Um, there are some problems they've encountered, which is identity theft and malicious software. When we say identity theft, it's the crime of obtaining the personal or financial information of another person to use their identity to commit fraud, such as making unauthorized transactions or purchases. While malicious software have the viruses, Trojan, spyware, hardware, phishing, and many more. So here are the examples encountered by Facebook. Um, in 2009, 18 month hacker scam for passwords resulted in Trojan horse download that stole financial data. So they scam users for getting the passwords and Trojan, when we say Trojan, is uh, one of the malicious software. It is a malware that downloads onto a computer to be disguised as the legitimate program. Um, hindi ito basta-basta na-identify ang mga user kasi nagpapanggap sila na parang legit, yung parang um, trusted na software or any um, um, to be downloaded. So that, yun, sa, nung 2009, na, na, na kuha nila yung financial data na na-scam nila. So, in December 2008, Code Face Worm. Code Face Worm is part of the malicious software. Um, I actually searched about Code Face Worm. So, once installed on your computer, the Code Face Worm tunnels through your system, collecting personal information like log in and log on and banking information. Mining your contact list for additional targets and creating fake posts in your name. So, para pwede siya may use as defamation sa isang user. In May 2010, spam campaign aimed at stealing logins. So, it's also the same. Um, another malicious software. Um, so, when we say spam, or spamming is the use of messaging systems to send multiple unsolicited messages to large numbers of recipients for the purpose of commercial advertising. So, for any prohibited purpose or simply repeated to sending the same message to the same user. Um, yeah. So, it illustrates types of security attacks facing consumers in Facebook. Um, and dem demonstrates ubiquity of hacking malicious software. When you say ubiquity, it's the fact of appearing everywhere. So it is common. It's happening right now. It is real and or existing. 
So very common na po talaga yung mga malicious softwares and the identity theft nasa sa atin na lang ng mga users kung magpapaloko tayo dito or kakagati natin ang pae nila sa atin para makuha yung information sa atin. So, in system vulnerability and abuse, when we say vulner vulnerability is the weakness, system weaknesses, and it, goes, it can be abused. So, sa system, o ang mga software system, hindi pa rin ito perfect kasi nakakaroon pa rin ng vulnerability or weaknesses or weakness at naabuso din ito. Yes, they, they created this to protect us against from other malicious offers or threats. However, meron pa rin mga instances na na ano pa rin ito. Yes, number one sa security and, and controls. So, in security, the policies, procedures, and technical measures used to prevent unauthorized access, alteration, theft, or physical damage to information system. Yes, if there is security, we can gain privacy as users. So, every user have a security to protect them from harm or threats like malicious software and gain some personal information from the users. However, security can be vulnerable and abused. So in controls, these methods, policies, and organizational procedures that ensure safety of organizations and sets like accuracy and reliability of its accounting records and operational adherence to management standards. So, controls is very important then, but there are some instances um, these records can be manipulated by others, especially like hackers who are good in hacking. Uh, para mas maintindihan, before, computer automation, data about individuals or organizations were maintained and secured as paper records dispersed in separate business or organizational units. Information systems concentrate data in computer files that can potentially be accessed by large numbers of people and by groups outside of the organization. When large amounts of data are stored in electronic form, they are vulnerable to many more kinds of threats than when they exist in manual form. Through communications networks, information systems in different locations can be interconnected. The potential for unauthorized access, abuse, or fraud is not limited to a single location but can occur at any access point in the network. So that's the system vulnerability and abuse. So good day sir. Um ako na ako na yung son pa naman, Brian Bayoa. So why is them are, are vulnerable? So bakit nga ba vulnerable ang system? So unang-una access of networks. So ito yung mga ano, madali ma-access kung sino-sino yung nakakagamit. Kaya mataas yung possibility na ma-breach ang system kasi parang ano sa panahon niyo na madami ng network, madami yung ano, madami yung way para ma-access yung system. Tapos, ano, parang mas madali sa hacker na napuntahan nyo kasi nandun na sa internet. Tapos, next one is hardware problems. Breakdown configuration errors, damage from improper use of use or crime. So, isa pa sa ano, mga ano, vulnerability ng system is Pag nasira yung mga main unit na nag-hold ng system, apektado lahat yung ano, yung mga ibang function ng system. Special special mention sa ano, kunyari yung data loss pag pumalya yung mga server. Pag mga ganun, yung mga ano. So pangalawa yung disaster, yung disaster. Parang 
same same ano lang sila mas parang same category lang sila sa sa hardware plant nyo so, parang mga unexpected na nangyari sa ano sa network parang vulnerable yung system dun sa mga unexpected kaya kailangan ng maintenance agad para di lumaki yung problema tapos sa use of networks uh, computer outside of the firm's control so yun na nga pag pag nasa labas ka ng ano ng control ng ano ng firm mo uh, vulnerable ka sa mga spyware uh, spyware mga hacking tapos pag lalo na pag na lost mo yung ano yung dito sa parteng parteng dito parang parang same sila pag na lost mo yung ano yung mga portable device mo na nakalagin doon sa system pwedeng mag ano pwedeng malagin yun or ma-access ng ibang tao so parang threat din yun sa mga confidential na ano confidential contents ng system niya so next is malware malicious software so unang una sa na example ng malware is viruses so ano ba yung viruses so ang mga malware oh, so, so yung virus mga malware program yun na dinisen para mag ng damage nag nang corruption ng data sa computer or nagdi-delete ng files nakakapasok sa unit mo yun pag nagda-download ka sa mga delikado ng website or may mga naklik ka na link sa email so yun tapos yung worm naman parang hindi naman siya nagano ng di-delete ng mga ano ng mga files sa unit mo parang ang purpose lang ng worm is ikakapin niya yung sarili niya hanggang sa dumami tapos parang mag-occupy siya ng malaking storage tapos pag pag madami na siyang copy files parang pag ano bababa yung ano bababa yung performance ng mga unit kasi nag-occupy din ng ano RAM storage yung mga ano na yan yung mga worms na yun tapos yung trohan versus naman mga ano, ano to type ng ano malware na akala mo okay lang benign parang harmless parang kunyari yung PDF naka-download ka ng PDF sa na hindi mo naman alam kung saan galing tapos akala mo PDF lang virus pala so ganun yung mga trohan versus nagpapanggap na harmless na files pero sa backdoor inatake na yung ano system mo so pangalawa naman is malware con So, unang-unang ano, uh, sample is SQL injection attacks. Hacker submit data to web, web forms to exploit site on protected software sense. So, ano, ang SQL injection attack, inatake yung mga ano, inatake yung backend ng system para parang mag input sila ng mga SQL code para ma-display mga system, ma-display ng system yung mga data na di dapat naka-display. Kung nyari yung mga password na dapat di no, dapat naka-display. Tapos, nape-fetch nila gamit nung pag-submit ng mga SQL code. So, pangalawa naman is spyware. Mga mga program na nire-record, mga program na nire-record yung activity ng user pag nagsaserve ng web. So, parang makikita yung activity mo habang ginagamit mo yung ano, yung unit mo or yung device mo. Tapos yung keyloggers naman, tinatrack nito yung mga keystroke, yung kada pin dot sa keyboard mo. Uh, kadalasan ginagamit yung para makuha yung mga ano, password or username na victim. Tapos, dito naman sa hacker and computer crimes. Uh, meron tayo dito ng sample ng hackers versus crackers. So basically, may dalawang klase ng tao na, na merong, merong hacking skills. Ito yung mga hackers tapos crackers. So, ang hackers muna ay mga tao na nag-hack ng device na may permission ng owner. Para maayos sa... sa para ma... Kunyari, pinapaayos yung device nila. Kailangan nila ng hacker para ano, matanggal yung mga viruses. Ganon. Hackers yung pinapuntahan nila. Tapos, minsan... Minsan, yung mga ibang hackers, yung system mismo yung hinahack nila na may permission ng... Para, may permission sa, gov sa government organization kasi yung hackers hinahanap nila yung mga loopholes sa system tapos ayos nila yon tapos yung mga hackers dito parang kung, di kung babasayan natin to dito sa general term na to hackers versus crackers itong hackers 
Pwede siyang tawag na black hat. Ay, ano, white hat. White hat hackers. Tapos, sa, so, tapos, dito naman tayo sa isa, crackers. Ang crackers naman ay binabypass nila yung system tapos aim nila na i-violate ito tapos mag-fetch ng data without permission or sirain mismo yung system. Yung crackers also called as black hat hackers. Tapos yung mga gawain ng ano, mga black hat hackers, ito, system intrusion, system damage, cyber vandalism. So, ano mo na intrusion kasi binabypass nila, walang ano ng permission as din ang damage nila. Tapos, why, why yung mean ng damage is ito, cyber vandalism. Cyber vandalism. Intentional disruption, defacement, destruction of website or corporate uh, corporate information system. So, ang cyber vandalism is type ng cyber crime na ang purpose ay magdulot ng damage or mag-disrupt ng mag mag disrupt ng system kahit wala naman silang mga kontera or end goal. Parang mga crackers sila. Mga crackers na nung titrip lang. Tapos, defacement, parang ano niya, website defacement. Ano, yung mga content ng ano, website, papalitan nila ng mga, ano, ng mga malilaswat na content or ano, or mga nakaka-open na content para siraan yung website. Papalitan nila yung content para parang troll. Tapos, destruction of policy on corporate system. Para example, DDoS attack or ano, distributed denial of service. Parang pinaplad nila yung ano, mismong site para mag-crash. Tapos di, man, di, di makagamit yung, yung ibang user. So, that's that's my part of ano, my part of my presentation sa group namin. So, thank you. Hello, my name is Mark Adrian Estepona and I am one of the member of group 3 and I am and I am assigned to discuss about one of the major part of this topic about the securing today's information system and I will be focusing on this section about the cyber crime or the computer crime. Um, Pag-usapan natin dito ay magtoton tayo or magtoton tayo ng pansin regarding the definition of of computer crime or the cyber crime um, at, at andun, rin po, andun, andun rin yung mga cyber crime offenses na, ma, na maaaring gawin upang ma-interfere yung security ng isang information system at iba pa. So, first, let's define computer crime or cyber crime. Um, also known as cyber crime, um, defined as any violation of criminal law that involve a knowledge of computer technology for their perpetration investigation or prosecution sinasabi nga dito it is actions those actions na nababiolate yung criminal law that involve a knowledge of computer or technology when we say about cyber or computer related po dyan yung mga interconnected or yung mga interconnected connections mga, mga internet technology computation algorithms and other related to cyber crime at ay cyber the word cyber uh, pag sinasabi naman natin tong crime syempre ito yung mga action na nilalabag yung batas or law under sa criminal law dito sa Pilipinas meron po tayong tinatawag na Republic Act 10175 or also known as the Cyber Crime Prevention Act of 2012 at dun po nakalagay Yung mga cyber crime offenses, example of cyber crime offenses, uh, computer related offenses, content, content related offenses, and others. Okay, those actions, ito nga yung mga action na, na related sa mga computer or computer technology na nilalabag yung criminal law. Oh. There are two types of cyber crime. It is either computer may be target of crime or computer may be instrument of crime. Gagamitin mo yung computer para makakomit ng crime and and magkukomit ka ng crime dun mismo sa computer. First, meron po tayo ditong breaching confidentiality of protected computerized data. O nilalabag mo yung confidentiality ng isang system or data or maaring database na protected. 
So, number 2, accessing a computer system without the authority. So, in-access mo yung computer system without the authority of the right owner. So, ma dito sa pag-access mo, maaaring, maaaring makakumit ka ng crime like kukunin mo yung mga informations nila without the authority of the owner. And also, bin or nilabag mo or in, in, in reckless mo, reckless na pagpasok dun sa may confidentiality or integrity or security ng isang computerized data. That is consider as a computer crime without the authority for the proper owner. Um, dito naman po sa pangalawa is gagamitin mo yung computer as an instrument para makapag para makapag commit ng isang isang crime. First is the theft of trade secrets. Means, itong secrets na ito meaning confidentiality. It is not published but publicly but it is private. private. So theft meaning, meaning pagnanakaw ng data or information. And also, number two is the using of email for threats or harassment. Um, itong email na ito, maaaring Gmail or email, na magsisend siya ng email upang makapag-threats or maaaring harassment o piliting ka na, na kumuha ng information. Example, example of, that, of that is, kunyari, um, May isang text message na maaring i-blackmail or back, sinatawag natin blackmailing. So, dito sa blackmailing na to maaaring involved ka sa isang company na gumawa ka ng isang anomaly. Pero yung tao na yung nag-send ng text message na yun, ay alam niya yung anomaly. So, isasabi niya sa boss niya. So, et, eto, mag-detect siya sa yun na parang Pengi nga, pengi ako, kunyari, pengi ako ng pabor or maaring pera yung maging pabor na yon upang hindi sabihin sa sa iyo ng boss na yun na yung anomaly na yun na ikaw yung gumawa. And yan yung example ng blackmailing. Um, at dito naman po tayo dadako sa mga cybercrime offenses. So, meron tayong identity theft, phishing, evil twins, farming, click fraud, Cyber terrorism and cyber warfare. So, unang una sa cyber crime offenses natin is the identity theft. Ito yung mga actions na resulted to a cyber crime. Number one is the identity theft. Dito sa identity theft is the theft of personal information. Kukunin mo yung personal information na hindi sa iyo. Example of that is a social security ID, driver's license or credit card numbers to impersonate someone else. Example of that, nam, dalawa kasing ibig sabihin niyan. It is, it is natural or juridical. Kapag sinasabi natin natural, maaaring kukunin mo yung information ng specific or isang, per, isang person or sikat na maaaring sikat or maraming kakilala. Kapag sinasabi naman po natin juridical, Ito yung involved po dyan yung mga big company Like kukunin mo yung mga logo, logo nila Para magpanggap ka Na isang legit, legitimate business owner So yun So, so dahil dun Example of that dun sa natural um, Kunyari kukunin mo yung information Yung picture ng isang person So, mag, so ang gagawin mo Magsusilisit ka ng pera dun sa mga pinsan niya So mag, ano ka, mag magpapanggap ka na ikaw yun para makapagsolicit ng pera or makakuha ng pera dun sa mga pinsan niya, sa mga magulang niya and others through text messages. Kapag, kapag dito naman po sa juridical, kunyari, example of that, kukuha ka ng information or yung mismong business name or company logo ng isang organization tapos magpapanggap ka na nag operate ka nun. So, marami ka mabibiktima lalo na sa mga client. So, client ng isang respective owner na, kin na kinuha mo or business. So, number two is phishing. Dito sa phishing, ito yung mga spam emails or text messages. So, ito nga, setting up fake websites or sending email messages that look like me legitimate business to us user for confidential personal data. <coughs> ito yung kadalasan ng mga fake web websites or fake emails 
na nagsisend sa mga cellphone natin. Example of that, minsan may, may ano, magugulat ka na lang na email ng mga spam text messages. Kunyari, nanalo ka ngayon ng 100,000. Yun, nag-email. Kunyari, from Willie, Willie Rebellium eh. Nanalo ka ngayon ng 100,000. So, yun, sabi ngayon doon, you need to fill out this this form para matanggap yung reward na yun. But, yung reward na yun is fake. So, nagpanggap siya na si Willie Rebellium eh. So, nagpanggap siya si Willie Ikaw naman na auto-auto, nag-fill out ka naman ng personal information mo. Nilagay mo yung full name mo, yung address mo, yung age, yung full address, um, yung parent information mo, yung educational attainment mo, lahat ng mga mahalagang data na maaring makuha sa iyo. So, yon sa pag-fill out mo yun, makukuha yung information mo yun dahil na-auto ka or na or na auto ka ng fake email na yun na daw na si Willie Rebellium na nanalo ng na nanalo ka daw ng price na 100,000. So, yun yung example ng phishing. Doon sa mga maaring <coughs> kamitin sa iyo or doon sa mag-action siya na mag-text siya ng message sa iyo or mag-email. So, number three, evil twins. Those are the wireless networks that pretend to offer trust trustworthy Wi-Fi connection to the internet. Ito yung mga fake or nagpamanggap na mga internet providers na maaring makakonekta ka doon pero napepretend lang po siya na isa siyang trustworthy wifi or maaring nagpepretend siya na legitimate internet provider pero dahil doon sa nangakonect ka or nabiktima ka niya kung makukuha mo yun dahil sa pagkonect mo doon maaring makuha yung information mo including yung your bank accounts ngayon ah, dahil nakakonect ka maaring matrace yung password and other information na maaring makuha sa iyo. So, kapag nakuha yung yung personal information na yun, gagamitin ng 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 suspect para makapagkita ng money or person or for personal gain in, for personal gain purposes. <coughs> so, pang-apat diyan ay ang farming. Redirect users to bogus web page even when individual types correct web pages at least in his or her <coughs> browser. Uh, ito yung kadalasan ng mga fake websites na nagsisense <coughs> para makapunta ka dun sa portal nila. Ito yung mga fake website na napapanggap sila na real pero kukunin nyo yung information na yun dahil pumunta ka dun sa webpage nila. At yun yung common example ng farming. Next is the click fraud. Of course, when individual computer prudently clicks on online ad without any intention or learn more about the advertiser or making a purchase. So, dito sa click fraud, iba to dito sa may farming. Kasi dito sa farming, focusing on, on website ito, click fraud, maaring ito yung button na <coughs> na na ipupunta ka dun sa ano, sa website nyo. Pag in-link mo yung button, maaring makuha sa iyo yung, yung, yung information like your bank accounts or your password. Kunyari, pag in-link mo, napunta ka sa isang website, tapos in-link mo yung button. Tapos, may agreement pala dun sa pag-click mo ng yes, kunyari, you agree for this terms and condition. Nagpindot ka ng yes. Pero, dun sa may terms and condition na yun, maaring may, nakasulat doon na na maaaring na, may na-violate ka doon. So, do, those, do, dahil doon sa may pag-click ng button na yun, maaaring complicated yung mangyari or maaaring makuha yung personal information mo doon like your baka, bank account password. So, na, ang pinakauli na cybercrime offenses is the cyber terrorism and cyber wife, warfare. Ito yung pinakamabigat or pinaka pinakamalakas or pinakamabigat na cybercrime among those na na-mention ko. Dito sa cyber terrorism and cyber warfare, maaaring involved na dito yung mga malaking tao, organization or company or maaaring political. Okay? So, kunyari, may system dun sa isang government. So, kunyari, nakuha mo yun or na-interfere mo or na-alterate mo yung mga data dun sa system nila dun sa government na yun na ng violent ng violent 
or massive, basi violent dun lahat sa may government. So, ano yung mga under sa government? So, maa maaaring marami kang mabiktima ng mga tao dun dahil under nga sa government. So, maaaring ma-violate mo or ma-illegally access mo yung system ng isang government. And that is is common example of cyber terrorism and cyber warfare. So, for the next, sen next session, no, at yun na po yung mga cybercrime offenses. At meron pa po dyan iba, pero anim lang po yung minensyon natin. So, so, dito naman sa next part is, is all about under sa may loob ng company or or mga cyber na mga action or illegal action na nangyayari sa mga company. So, internal threats under employees. So, number one dito, security threats often originate inside an organization. So, or originate inside, inside nga meaning internal. Pag sinasabi natin internal meaning inside. So, nangyayari, nangyayari yung 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 action na na-interfere yung security na nag na nagkakos ng threat sa mga employees na nandun. So, yun, yung meaning ng internet, internal threats under employees. So, inside knowledge. So, inside knowledge meaning yung mga, maring mga concept or under business rule na meron dun sa may organization. So, sloppy security procedure. Ma, so, dahil dun para ma magkaroon ng security threats dahil sa mga user lack of knowledge sa paggamit ng system na yun. So, user, maaaring ito yung mga employee or mga user ng, ng system, ng organization na may lack of knowledge in manipulating or sa paggamit ng system na yun. So, so dahil sa lack of knowledge na meron sa na paggamit sa system, maaaring mag-cause ng security manipulation or magkaroon ng, ng cybercrime sa loob na yun, dahil sa kawalan ng knowledge. So, next is social engineering. So, this is a social engineering, tracking employees into revealing their password by pretending to be legitimate members of the company in need of information. Dito, sa social engineering na to, kumbaga tinitrick yung mga employees, magpapanggap ka na you are one of the member of the organization or nagtatrabaho ka mismo dun sa big business na yon. So, magpapanggap ka. So, papasukin mo yung system nila. So, pag mapasok mo yun, maaaring makuha mo yung mga co-employees or mga employees na nandun, yung mga, yung mga important information nila, such as their passwords. So, kapag makuha mo yung passwords nila, so, maaaring magamit mo yun upang makakomit ng cyber crime dun sa may specific business na yun. So, matitrigger yung security ng isang system and also the integrity. So, in order to ensure its software quality, meron po tayong mga batayan na sinusunod. So, ito yung mga maaaring simple ways para ma-insure natin na yung software quality natin is, is, is in the high level. So, number one, meron po tayong software metrics. So, involved dito yung mga numerical value. So, the, the main objective of this software metrics to assess the system in form of quantified measurements. So, quantified meaning numbers. So, unang-una dyan, under this organization is the number of transaction. Number two is the online response times, payroll check, printed per hour, known bugs per hundred of lines. Okay. Example na ito, maaaring... Ito example na to pero mag add ako ng example, kunyari sa isang system, in order to ensure the software quality, dapat binibiling, binibilang mo rin yung lines of code in each module. So, one of that. And also, the interfaces, including the input and output, dun sa pag-input, so, bibilagin mo rin dun yung mga sa kada module, kung... kung ilan yung input interfaces. Pag sinasabi natin, input interfaces, dun yun yung, yung mga placeholder holder na yun na maaari, na maaari maka-accept ng data. So, yun. So, yun ito, follow some software metrics method. So, number two, we need to, to have irregular testing. 
So we need to test, we need to test each modules or system para dapat dito sa pagtest na ito, ini-insure natin na walang error. Walang error dun sa system na yun, walang data breaching, walang data interference na nangyayari. And also, dapat nag-work yung every module or functionality. Dapat nag-work yan. Kapag hindi yan nag-work, meaning it is not intended the proper the proper implementation of the system. Kaya kailangan natin ng regular testing para ma-insuring yung security ng system. So, dito, pangalawa ay pangatla is the walkthrough. So, review of specification or design document by small group of qualified people. So, so since you are involved in, in a small group or an organization, we need to review the so, the software specification it is hardware or software specification dapat may sapat tayong kaalaman paano gamitin yung system through implementation of hardware and software so dito pang panghuli is the debugging so it, 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 ito yung process in which our errors are eliminated kasama to dito sa my pag regular testing so Dito sa pag-regular testing mo to, so maaaring mak makakuha ka ng error dahil nireview mo yung system. So maaaring makakuha ka ng program error. So ang pinaka-effective na gagawin mo dyan is maaaring mag-troubleshoot ka ng, ng error na yun or i-debug mo yung error na yun. So ayusin mo yung <coughs> main functionality na yun. And that's all for, for about, about the cybercrime and cybercrime offenses and and also maaaring mga mangyari na cybercrime sa loob ng company or organization and na-discuss ko na rin yung yung mga batayan para ma-insure natin yung security o yung software quality level ng quality level ng isang system sa isang company and that's all for my discussion thank you so an introduction to app domains so, ano yung app domains? Ang app domains is siya yung involved sa servers na nakapag-host sa server level applications. My examples dito is yung mail servers na sa receive and nakapag-send ng emails. So, anong purpose ni app domain or application domain? Ang purpose nito is protektahan yung domain so bakit pa protektahan yung domain kasi yung domain is dyan nakalagay yung mga database servers na dyan nakakapag access yung mga users and other servers so dapat secure yun para iwas sa major threats or data losses unauthorized access sa domain na yan. so mga examples ng app domains is yung mga banks, shared companies or hospitals kahit man mga maliit sila na management kailangan na ng small software sa company na yan. since ang pinaka purpose talaga ng app domains is security para siyang acting as mechanism sa domain iwas sa major threats so next objects and types an object resides in exactly one of the main as the values so ano yung object ano yung object sa domain ang object sa app domain is yung nakakapag-access sa uh, .NET application So, ano yung .NET application? Yung .NET application siya yung nagagamit ng app domain ginagamit ginagamit yung app domain as a container para sa code and data mga similar nito ng .NET is like yung OS Embedding system para sa processing ng container for code tapos data. So, anong purpose ni .NET sa app domain? Which, similar din sa purpose ni app domain is security. 
pero siya yung nag-isolate ng code para ma-secure yung ma-secure yung mga ano, subdomain so bakit ginagamit si ano si abdomen ay si meta application para nga makapag-allow makapag-access sa mga assemblies yung gamit yung ad, .net application so ano yung mga assemblies is yung namespaces mga class para sa corresponding domain so dapat yung object is nakapag-reside lang sa is, isang domain as in yun yung purpose niya object references must refer to objects in the same domain same as sa uh, resides in exactly one domain so values and next uh, objects types reside in exactly one domain so types similar din sa objects na nakapag-reside sa isang domain sa one domain lang So, if two cup domains need to use a type, one must initialize and allocate the type one spare up domain. So, the process nito is yung if multiple na up domains is nag use ng isang type, is dapat sa pag initialize and allocate is one type lang yung mga pag initialize and allocate sa isang lock to bed. So, ang next dito is i-explain yung sa furthermore sa types. So, similarly sa object is yung type is na na gagamit siya sa isang one up domain lang. And ano, if a type is used in more than one up domain one must load and initialize the types module in assembly once for each up domain type is used in since so previously sabi dun sa previous na page is yung types is nakakapag reside sa isang isang up domain isang isang up domain yung yung types module in assembly na initialize niya once for each up domain to type is used in so, sabi sa previous is na initialize and allocate ng type once up, per up domain since if dalawa yung up domain na ginagamit yung pag gamit ng types is pa isa isa lang for each up domain Next, since each such up domain contains a separate copy of the type, each has its own private copy of the type's static field. Similar dun sa idea na isang up domain lang, dapat na separate yung copy ng kada type. Each sila meron ng own private copy since magkakaseparate yung ano yung up domain na naka sa isang type So dito sa threads and up domains uh, CLR system threading thread object is different from an OS hard thread and referred to as a soft thread A soft thread resides in exactly one up domain A given up domain can have multiple soft thread subjects If a hard thread means of executing code in multiple up domains, each up domain will have a distinct software object affiliated with it for a given up domain. So dito, thread represents a scalable entity in up domain. It is a soft thread, not recognized by underlying OS. So OS threads are referred to as a hard thread. There is no one-to-one -one relationship between hard threads and CLR soft thread objects. So, a CLR software object resides in exactly one up domain. In the current implementation of CLR, a given hard thread must have a most one software object affiliated with it for a give, for a give up domain. And it maintains a per up domain thread table to ensure that given 
hard drive is affiliated with only one software object per domain. And dito naman sa resources and memory. An app domain's resources are held in memory as long as the owning app domain is loaded. And unloading the app domain is the only way to unload the module or assembly or to reclaim the memory consumed by a type of static fields. So when you have finished using an application domain, you can unload, unload it using a domain that unload method. So your unload method, sina shut down specified your application domain. So during the unloading process, no new threads can access the application domain, and all application domain data structures are free. So the assemblies loaded into the application domain are removed and are no longer available. So in so if the assembly the app domain is domain neutral, the data from the assembly never remains in the memory until the entire process is shut down. So there is no mechanism to unload the domain neutral other than shutting down the entire process. In the app domain events, the app domain types of course have full of events that allow interested parties to be notified of significant conditions in running program. So this is the list of assembly. This is the list of events. The first one is the assembly load. Assembly resolve, type resolve, resource resolve, the domain unload, the process exit, and the handled exception. App domains and assembly resolver. First bullet. App domain plays a critical role in controlling the behavior of the assembly resolver, the property used by the assembly resolver, and a single data structure of the type of app domains and setup, which is maintained on par. App domain basis the CLR expose this data structure by the app domain setup information property. Um, second bullet. Um, each app domain can have its own APIs and configuration files, so can each have its own prop path and version properties. The property used by the assembly resolver either by using the up domain up domain set of property by calling set data and get data with the right um, third bullet is up domain stores the property used by the assembly resolver in the day in a data structure called up domain in setup which is maintained on per up domain basis the up domain the up domain maintain a data structure called up domain setup for each up domain which is attribute utilized with the assembly resolver are stored. Um, app domain and dynamic directories. First bullet. This, this mean is that we need have a alternative location for the dynamic code generation. Um, the base directory in this example is, is indented to outside the but of for the example is application be sure to compile the example in different location delete the base directory and all sub directories each time you run the sample and second bullet is this role of the up domain dynamic directory property to retrieve the name of the directory so it can create a directory an example is Easily create the directory bef beforehand by concentrating the original path that has code of the application name and the application name. Um, third bullet is each app domain may have at most one dynamic directory. Um, for fourth bullet is this dynamic directory is added automatically to the prop path ASP.NET is a heavy user of this feature. The probot automatically adds the dynamic directory. This function is frequently, frequently used by the ASP.NET. Um, shadow copying. First bullet is 
shadow copying address the problem related to the server side development and development the shadow copying of the server side by development and development issue um, second bullet is the classic win32 loader takes a red lock on the file that it's allowed to ensure that no change are made to the underlying executable image so uh, so in order to guarantee that no alteration are done to the underlying executable image the third additional winter loader takes a red lock on a file that it's loaded um, so third bullet is so everything uh, overwriting this the II with new version requires shutting down the server. Therefore, it, it is necessary, necessary to shut down the server before replacing this DII with new version. And net solution. And net, we have the shadow copying facility. A shadow copying facility is the duplicate of all data that is held on that bullion at one well-defined in instant in time when the LC CLR loads are assembled using shadow copying a temporary of the under underlying files is made in different directory because they are added to the list of references as symbolized during page compilation in this convenience mechanis mechanism only not only the flowing code behind classes but also for deploying utility or business logic classic that may useful across all page in application these temporary files are loaded a uh, LU of the original symbolized when an application domain is a configure to shadow copy files a symbolized from the application part of the copy to another location and added from the location when shadow copying is enabled it the default is to shadow copy all a symbolized found tooth problem that is the that is in the deck directories specified by the private bin fat and application base Property, properties the shadow copy by direct, directories cap, properly property restrict the shadow copy to the assemblies in the director, directories specified by shadow copy directories shadow copying some information relates to release the product may be may be substantially modified before its release Micro, microsoft makes no worries exp, express or implied with respect to the information provided here asf net is one of the most successful web application development frame frameworks by Microsoft with every update in new and extended picture feature pictures are added to that that help developers deploy highly scaffable and height and in, high inform in Inform informants web application when coupled with application monitoring and other 
performance performance tools such as a uh, profiler ASF net be because of powerful solution for building incredible apps.